Welcome back to yet another episode of the M30B35 E28. Today is a very exciting episode. It is going to be a lot. We are going to be plumbing up everything on this engine to get it to run in the 528E. That means wiring harness adaptations, cooling system routing, um, whatever else, and then ITB installation. I wanted to make the ITB installation its own thing, but it is almost impossible because that is going to be synonymous with installing everything else because I need to have these in place to understand how to route certain things for the swap. So it's all going to happen at once. By the end of this video, I'm hoping that this thing is running, probably not fine tuning, but running. So this will be a good one. So let's just get right into it. The wiring part, probably the most daunting part of this task. We have stepped inside because it's so hot outside, there's no reason to be out there when all this can be done in here. So what we have to do now is adapt the C101 from the E24. This is the same as an E34, E32. Adapt that to the E28 C101, which is the square connector right here. So my donor harness off the 533 parts car, I cut the square C101 out, and I also cut the C103 out, which is what goes to the um, tack and what you would call it, um, fuel consumption. So we need both of these. I got these both off the donor harness. Then we have our M30 B35 harness here, where we have to basically adapt this. So there is a really wonderful wiring diagram which I will put in the video on my 28 myE28.com. Um, by Bradley Denton, got to give him credit, and he gave us all the information on which goes to which, so I don't have to do any work here really other than cut, splice. Yeah, so I'm just going to get into this. We're going to start wiring. I'm going to time lapse it really quick and I'll show you guys the final product. Right here is our new connector. No more round 30 pin We have or 20 pin. We have the new square style E28, so we can plug this right in. M30 in 528E. The power steering lines, identical. You can just hook them up. So I'm gonna go down here with some new crush washers and throw in our new power steering lines. Okay, just like that, power steering system is complete, installed, ready for fluid. We'll wait on the fluid. All right, so now the cooling system is where things get a little more fun. A couple things have to be changed, modified, etc. We got a little, got to get a little creative. First off, what we don't need is this expansion tank. Or wait, if you will. So there's that. So. I splurged a little bit and got a brand new expansion tank because the stock one is just butt ugly. This is from my donor car original. I mean, look at the difference. Am I really going to have a brown expansion tank on an engine this good? So, 100 plus dollars for this hurt a little bit, but it is what it is. Now, the only other issue we have is M30 expansion tanks on this side and it doesn't have any of this booster stuff. Usually I think it would go like right around here. We're gonna have to get creative and mount this tank specially uh, out of the way of the harness. This is gonna be a last step here because we have to get everything routed in here first. So first off from your donor car hopefully, we have the spider hose which will go from the thermostat housing here in the front, goes to the back to the heater core inlet and then this goes to the expansion tank. Now when you look up part numbers, 
it gives you this arrangement in three different hoses with a union. I don't know where I got this from or what, you know, how to get it. The part number doesn't even pop up, but I'm lucky enough to have a one piece hose, which is way better. So I will use this instead of the three hose method, less places for leak. We'll lay this in there. So that's good. You just want that from a donor M30. But then what you have to do is figure out the one hose that goes to the heater valve. So the heater valve is in a different location on the M20 cars versus the 535s. It's down here lower, so you need a, lower, a longer hose. The hose that they give you for this part number, I bought that since I don't need it because I have the spider hose. That hose actually fits really nicely on the water neck here in the back, and then it actually curves exactly like how you want it to, to go on this, so about right. Let's see how I'm gonna do this. Right like this. That's a pretty solid hose right there. It almost looks factory. It's gonna slope down nicely. It'll be out of the way of everything. So yeah, I'm gonna mark that. And that's what we're gonna go with. Okay, let's see. Slide that on there. Through under like this. I would say that's perfect for some you know, hose clamp. Oh, I like that very much. That is a very nicely run hose, I would say. Before we do the radiator, the radiator or the um, fan hookups for the aux fan are on the driver's side with the M20 radiator. The M30 radiator, they're obviously on the other side. Why BMW made that different is beyond me. But, funny enough, they run through here, so you can just put them in and re-attach them on the other side. Okay, so they run right here, and then down through the kidney girl. Oh, I see how. So on the M20, the loom goes this way. On the M20, they just reroute it this way. On the M30, I'm guessing the loom just stays, and then it goes out. That's hilarious. And boom, we have aux fan wires on the passenger side. Very simple. Now, if you guys are wondering what the AC, the M30 is obviously a little bit longer than the M20. I'm using the M20's stock compressor, which has the right angled fitting but this line is just this much too short, which is so crappy. So we cannot get the AC going quite yet. Uh, I'll have to get a custom line made. All right, radiator going in. Ouch. And this is a donor radiator from my parts car. So it's a little old, a little rickety, but E28 radiators are actually kind of hard to find and they're expensive. So I had to find a way to cut costs in some ways on this car. Before I put this lower radiator hose in, I have to install my brand new crank sensor. Forgot about that. I believe this is where it's supposed to be. Okay, these are all genuine BMW hoses. Okay, I got the lower radiator hose installed. Now we're going to do this intermediate little U-pipe, which is a total pain always. Okay, there we go. As I said, once everything is further along, we will get out of there. We will hook this all up. So I'm thinking it'll probably be right about like this, which is fine. Got to figure out how to mount it. I could zip tie it temporarily, but yeah, we'll do that later. On to the fun part now that the cooling system's done. We got the ITBs set up here. These have been sitting in my house for so long. It is time to get these going. So I got my diagram here trusty old RHD diagram 
And now I'm in the process of mocking everything up so I understand. So these are the first things to go on. These are the runners. And you have to get all your vacuum ports set up first. So I have this basically in the way I think it's supposed to go. You have the RHD vacuum blocks. You have one huge inlet. This is your ICV. You have a tiny inlet. This is your FPR. Then you have your six runners right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then it says on the diagram charcoal canister. I don't even think that this car has a charcoal canister, the E28. So that is going to run to my ECU because I'd rather have my map sensor working than a charcoal canister. So this I believe is set up properly. And then you have the runners that obviously have a different size base that screw into these. And then this one is the confusing one where you have the T here. One goes into the runner. One is a bigger port that goes to the brake booster, which this is actually a little small for my booster. I need to make sure I can tighten it enough. And then you have this one, which continues into your vacuum block. So it's kind of intuitive, but you kind of got to do a little bit of thinking. So I'm going to get these Teflon taped and all tightened in. I got to go get some vacuum line and then we can uh, install these. It doesn't mention the instructions that you need Teflon tape. But I would when you're using, you know, NPT fitting, stuff like this. I think Teflon tape is a good idea. A few moments later. Okay, after a whole lot of Teflon tape activity in the 100 degree de gar garage, I am finished and ready to continue. Yes, it is 100 degrees today. I am sweating profusely. I got stitches in my neck. This is horrible, but I am so dedicated to getting this car figured out and finished. I did have to cut the top studs because they were too long for the ITB thingies. And you can see why the throttle or the um, thermostat spacer is here because this hose is right next to this. And I actually believe on the ITB itself I have to shave one of these corners because it digs into the hose. Oh yeah. So I gotta file this down which we'll get to in a little bit. All right, now we're gonna lay this harness, which is gonna be like this. The harness is too big for the firewall hole, so now I have to grind out the firewall hole. Great. A little bit of filing, and we got that in. Coil wire and some ground, so I'll have to see what I can attach these to. Probably the old coolant reservoir mounting hold. That's what I call dual purpose. No more coolant reservoir. So now it's a ground. Trying to simplify some wiring and we also have to, on this harness, get rid of the auto TPS. This obviously does not work. The throttle bodies use a M50 style one, which I have to find. But what's nice is you can actually use the three existing wires out of the six that go into this plug and you can run your manual throttle position sensor off of it. So round plug is going bye-bye. I think I'm gonna keep this cover up here for the sake of keeping things tidy, but I'm gonna cut these wires because they don't have to be connected. So then this way I can get rid of this thick loom that is holding us back need the brown with the orange stripe, we need the brown with the blue, and we need the brown with the black. Now the rest of this can lay in here and not exist. These are the wires that go to the TCM, the old auto trans control. I have an M50 donor harness laying around, so I have the TPS connector for the M50 harness or the M50 throttle body. You might not have this, you might have to buy a pigtail or something. And then I will show you how the pinout on this goes. 
but each of these wires goes to a certain pin on the TPS which is labeled one two and three we are going to get the actual throttle bodies themselves on before we go for the wiring here I want to make sure the TPS is in the right spot so this one as they tell you I had to grind down this front corner a little bit just so that it's not riding on the coolant hose next ITB on we got this little component right here slides onto this shaft like that so this looks like it goes on this shaft right here yeah okay so these slide together got this stopper backwards so this arm needs to flip around. Is that even possible with the throttle body on? One error. And I gotta take this off. Okay, so I think I got this. It's a weird kind of little system, but you basically get them even it looks like and then you tighten them down together to clamp them onto the throttle body and now okay so I tried the multi-meter method of getting the TPS voltage adjusted it was not I was not getting the voltage I needed and I was very confused. I don't have uh, the connection to hook into my Mega Squirt yet, which is another annoying thing that I need to get figured out. So I can't connect to the ECU to, to adapt. So I emailed Rama, who owns RHD, and he emailed me back and said that the thing talking about adjustment is outdated. Now it's got set screws. He said, leave it how you got it, and that should be perfect for the TPS. So now I'm just gonna keep throw the TPS on here in its place and as long as it can open all the way and close all the way then you're good I'll run the adaptations later but for now we're gonna install it go ahead and get our last set of ITBs on this has to go on first And now I kind of understand how the how this setup works. These are the adjusters that it was talking about earlier on when it talks about like syncing them. So once I get my my balance flow thingy, I'll be able to sync all these in together. I mean, they're obviously close, they're eyeballed, but they have to be perfect. So and that's why you adjust these J hooks. Like right now, they are pretty much all the same. Ooh, yes baby, we got synced ITBs. How freaking cool does that look? So now my TPS wire that I made can run all the way down here and hook into the TPS just like that. Okay, checking in. I have spent probably three days of work trying to track down the issues I'm having with this car. We have gotten to a standstill with the ITB installation, and that is because, as I said to you guys, I wanted to try to test run this engine without all the final parts, right? Just to see how things work. Check for spark, check for fuel. No spark, no fuel, no ICV humming, no power to the fuel injector, uh, wires, main relay pins 87, no power. I have been chasing my tail like a maniac trying to understand what is wrong with this car. Something with the wiring, something with the ECU. I've tried crank sensors. It has been brutal and I have not understood. I've gone through five main relays out of nearly all my personal cars in my stash. Still nothing. Pins 87 in the relay were not working. 
when I would jump two pin 87s, I would get the ICV, I would get voltage, and I still don't think I would get crank or, or uh, fuel or spark. And now where we're at is, I have discovered something weird here. One was an issue, the diagram I put up in the earlier on for the C101 to C101 connector does not fully apply to an E24 harness. Now, there's three, three connectors that need to be pinned into the C103. The diagram I showed you only says two, the E24 harness is different. One of these is the green wire which powers the ECU and it powers it from the C103. So the way the E24, late E24s work with the B35 is you have a power wire that is green that runs from the body harness with the ignition and then goes in at the C101 from the body harness into the engine harness and it's a green wire and that green wire comes in and powers the ECU. Now where the E28 is different is the ECU C or the harness gets its power through this C103, this green wire right here, that's the ignition wire or right here, it's ignition wire two. That is your power. So not only do we have to do the other two splices to get the fuel consumption RPMs working, which I had mixed up. I had this white wire, which is for our RPM, I believe, tied into the green wire because the C101 is a little bit different. So I had the power wire tied into the fuel and fuel mileage or the tack, which is obviously wrong. So I went green to green now and still no no dice. And then I realized, I looked at this and it, it all makes sense now. So I'm splicing in from this connector for power and signal, right, to the ECU. Well, look which side of the harness I chose to wire these into the harness side, not the ECU side. So what I did was basically, these are coming from C101. These are your signals. This is supposed to be power. And I'm tying them into this connector that is going into the dash harness, basically, like the, the E28. This is where you're getting your stuff from in conjunction with this. Well, these inf this information has to go to the ECU. Look at the way I did it. The information from the E28 is going into the engine harness, which is going to the cut connectors over there, which aren't doing anything. So I'm supposed to tie them into this side, the ECU side, obviously. So I'm going to switch around my wiring here, and I'm likely to bet that we will have power restored to the ECU, meaning we will actually have function in the engine bay. I hope. I hope this works. I've been at this for like three days trying to troubleshoot this car. Okay, I have the wires tied into the actual ECU like they're supposed to be now. Moment of truth. I am so freaking nervous for this. I'm going to get you guys on the tripod here. First things first, let's see if we hear a hum without having to jump wires. All right, we have a hum. All right, three days of troubleshooting. Let's see if we got it. Yes! Yes! Oh, thank God. Fuel and spark. Oh, dude. The pain that I have suffered the past couple days trying to figure out what the hell happened here? I mean, you know, new engine, new wiring, new ECU. It was a freaking nightmare. But it looks like we have it figured out. Check it out. We got the ECU hooked up to a laptop. I had to buy a special cable. But the Mega Squirt works. I got the car cranking on this Mega Squirt. We have fuel. We have spark. We have... The things I think we need, what I don't think we have is the ICV, I think that has to be um, figured out or you know set up, um, but if you look at throttle position to see if my TPS wiring worked, check this out. Throttle position works baby. Now that the wiring's all figured out and we know that this car may actually work, I got the standalone hooked up, we're looking good. I'm going to get all this kind of sorted away. I'm going to get the fuel system hooked up here. 
I'm waiting on a couple fittings, but we'll get the rail in, the injectors, and then I got an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator and all that, and I'll show you what I, how that's all gonna go. So RHD supplies you with the fuel rail. It comes with one plug fitting, one fitting here that allows you to put a pipe thread to 5 sixteenths in it. It also comes with an AN fitting. I'm not running AM lines on this car. But uh, they include this, but this does not work because on the E28, the engine sits really close to the firewall. So I had to order a 90 here. So this is not going to be in use. Well, this part will be, but not the straight. But until that comes in, at least we can mount this up. So you need the plug on the front end because the thermostat, not thermostat, the cooling sensor here sits right here. So you can't put any fittings. So we cannot do a traditional flow through rail. And that's where I will start to explain how this operates once I get the regulator fittings. Um, basically you need an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator, obviously. You can't run a stock rail because it has no way of bolting in. So I almost tried that, but you will have a fire hazard. But anyway, we got pink top injectors from the S52 uh, M3. Fully rebuilt, refinished, new O-rings, flow tested. Look at how pretty these bad boys are. This looks awesome. The black was stripped away and they're clear coated in a polished look. So I think this goes really well with the you know flashiness of the engine bay. Really excited to run these. I use regular old lip Vaseline for uh, injectors because it doesn't eat through the O-rings. It's, it's fine. So these injectors were cleaned, rebuilt, flow tested, etc. from Frank Leo Grande at Leo Grande Racing. He's big in the E34, E30 community. You may have seen posts from him if you're on Facebook. Super cool guy, really great service, highly recommend because these bad boys look amazing. Got the brackets for the fuel rail installed there. Now, we can get our injectors hooked up. I think we're gonna have to do some ICV wire extensions because that's not gonna get us the ITV, ICV where we want it. So. Okay, so now we got this nice long ICV cord. So now we can run this down under here or we can get to our ICV, which I'm gonna kinda wanna have it sitting like. Now that the wiring for the ICV is sorted out, now we can actually get to the routing of the ICV. And here was the dilemma. So the fittings on the ICV are really big and the hose in the vacuum block with all the, fit the fittings that were supplied from RHD is a smaller connection. I mean, it's not even remotely close. So what was I to do? Well. At AutoZone, I went and went in the back and found a random assortment of hoses. This is like a heater hose from some sort of car, um, which is a nice little length here that I like. So that's my ICV connection. And then weirdly enough, I don't know where this is from, why I have it, but I have, basically it's from a vacuum boot or an intake boot on an M50 or something. It has the big ICV connection here and then it has the step down on the other side which happens to be the same size as on the manifold. So I got some hose that fits this connection, and now I can run the step, step it down into this, get it a little bit further away from the engine to where I decided I want to uh, mount my vacuum block. And that is our ICV thing. And then from there, I'm gonna get all the eight millimeter vacuum hose that goes into each throttle hooked up. Okay, so we're in the process of getting everything kind of fastened where it needs to be. We got the booster line hooked into the port under this throttle body like it says. Now we have to feed all six of the throttle bodies to the vacuum block. My ICV, I think I'm going to go with right here. I got it zip tied onto this line, zip tied down there, which kind of, I mean, doesn't put it in a great spot, but I decided I wanted my vacuum block to mount here. I drilled through this factory bracket, got a bolt in there. So it's bolted down as it should be. And then I got all the wires from the throttle bodies, the vacuum lines, I should say, routed to it. So, I mean, it's not the prettiest assortment of, of things, but it's, I think it's pretty good. 
So the ICV feeds in through the big hose. Then you got six vacuum lines to each throttle body. And now I just need one to the FPR, which I'm still waiting in the mail for my brackets before I install that. And then one has to go all the way to the map sensor. So I'm gonna try to route that now. We got our map vacuum line run to the ECU. Now it's time for the fun part. So I have an Aeromotive FPR here because we need a fuel pressure regulator because the rail does not have one on it. Fittings are actually kind of hard to get because these are never, you know, these will never come with fittings that go to 5 16 It's kind of a rare line in America because it's obviously, you know, on, on Euro cars. So I got these fittings on Amazon, which are dash six AN, which is what the fitting is to install to 5 16 So that means we have fittings out of here that connect straight to our fuel lines. We're not doing AN lines or anything like that. So I got three of these, you install these, fuel lines can hook right in, and then typically on a fuel pressure regulator setup for something like this, like even my turbo car, you have the feed that goes into the rail, and then out of the rail is the return. The return will flow through the regulator, and then out the bottom is the excess, and that's how you return to your fuel pump tank. I'm gonna kinda figure out where I want it in the car. I'm kinda thinking like, I almost might want to just put it right into the firewall right here because that's kind of a nice spot. And then we're going to have a gauge. Since I don't have a fuel pressure sensor and we need to know what our fuel pressure is, threading in a gauge here. So we'll always have a fuel pressure gauge. And that's why I think installing this right here would be nice. Look at that beauty. So we have our feed coming from the hard line under the car, into the regulator, out of the regulator, into the rail, and then we gotta run our return back to the return of the car. Check this unit out. We got our fuel pressure regulator all plumbed up, vacuum line and all. Another crucial thing you need for this project is a new throttle cable. So the E28 stock and or whatever, E24, usually, will not work, so you have to get rid of it, which is actually this one, the short little guy right here. This does not work, so we're gonna take our old throttle cable out. What you need is an E36 318i throttle cable, which is the four banger E36. Euro four bangers is not the same, because I bought this and it is not the right one. This right here is the correct one. The part number's in the RHD instructions. One more thing, we gotta return to the wiring one last time. We have to get our IET hooked up. So, for IET, what you have to do is, factory, and this is the coolest thing ever, the factory AFM wiring contains a IET sensor within it. So what we have to do is cut off this connector, cut and splice, and we're gonna get this AFM connector into this pigtail for our GM IAT sensor, which will go on the uh, kind of the back plate here for the ITBs, but first we're just gonna wire it up. So I'm gonna cut this, get the IAT on there. It's pins one and four. I'm gonna have to pull back the cover and see. Check it out. We now have a IAT converted harness. Very easy to do. This is our EVAP thing. We don't have that valve anymore, so tuck it. Tuck this. So this is the GM IAT. Okay, so that will just hang right there. Okay, first start attempt number one. Okay, we have fuel pressure. A little bit. Oh, oh, it's about to go. Oh my God, I'm excited. It's gonna be loud because I got no exhaust, but oh man, this is exciting. <laughs> okay, so I need, these two bolts need to come out to get this bracket on for the throttle. I don't know how I didn't see that. Okay, so I have no idea 
why we have two. I have no idea which of the two we're supposed to use. Let me just, as a rough knock up here. I mean, that'll for sure go, so we're going to use the shorter one. Connect our thingy right here to our drop link. This black arm right here to be two to three millimeters away from the stopper. Okay, now I'm getting it. Okay, so that has to be adjusted then because that's, it's kind of far. Now how can we make that closer? Oh, you just extend the... Oh, this is kind of simple. I would say that's it right there. Oh, yes. Okay. And then this comes around like this. Okay, so I'm kind of just going as I understand this. So I got the throttle cable hooked up and I got it articulating nice. And I think you just kind of want to adjust this bracket to where this stays closed, which I think right here. Now, they should be interlinked. So let's see, if I push the gas pedal, how does it go? It doesn't open full throttle, so that has to be adjusted. Oh, I still have an automatic kick down switch. I'm gonna have to swap that out. But, that's, that's pretty good. It's not all the way. We want to come here, so let's see if I, I can pull my throttle open a little bit if I get this thing to run. Okay, I need you, what we need to do, and the instructions say this, the port of the ICV has to be blocked. But if it's stuck to my phone, <laughs> it might. It's a brand new ICV, so. Not brand new. But. I'm scared. No, you're good. Alright, let's see if it runs. It's at 60, but now it's slowly so it's gonna, down to 20. I think it's going to go to zero. Uh, that should not be 60, right? Shouldn't it be like stock, like 35? I don't know. I think stock, well, it depends what stock is on this. It's like 35. Think we got too much fuel pressure? I don't know. Maybe. Because it's at 60 when you're cranking it. It's definitely at 60. Mm -hmm. Okay, stock fuel pressure for M30. Base map to run. Smells good. Headers look good. Smell good. Warm. No leaks. It doesn't seem like anything's leaking. 
but I need to understand how to adjust. That would be. Oh, I don't have to fasten all that. Yeah. You think it would be? You can adjust it while the while the key is turned. Well, it's not going to prime because the, only the Mega Squirt primes. Should I just run it? Probably. I eyeballed it. Oh, I don't know, I like that's a good location, right? Nice, you can see the fuel pressure easily. Mm -hmm. This thing sounds like a small block V8. <laughs> that's another thing. Dude, I can't believe though, an ITB a big block vacuum idle circuit runs on a stock ECU. That's you can insane. probably drive this motherfucker. not even blow up. On a stock ECU. Mean, you could drive it. It wouldn't make power. Well, that, that's how I know I uh, adjusted the TPS correctly and all that. Timing's right. Well, I never touched it. Oh, yeah, I did touch the timing because mm -hmm. I put the head on. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I was talking about. I was worried because I was like, shit, I did that like six months ago. I'm like, I've been so hyper-focused on this, the engine might not even be any good. Oh, man, I, I can feel the test drive. You mm -hmm. can, there's no ITB noises yet at all because you can't hear over this exhaust. Now comes the fun and nerve-wracking part of bleeding this cooling system, ensuring it holds temp and everything works and then retorquing the head. So with the M30, the procedure is, as it followed in the old videos of me assembling the engine, you do two torque um, sequences, and then you have to run the car for 25 minutes, I think it says, and then you can torque the head, so. Yeah, I actually had to run it for a split second to get the water pump pulling the coolant, because I just could not get it to come out the bleed there. I was overfilling it. Once I started it for like 10 seconds, the water pump sucked everything down. I was able to add a bunch more. And now we got coolant flowing out of the breather there. I'm gonna do a little bit more until we're sure there's no bubbles. I'm gonna do the bleeding process outside so I'm gonna asphyxiate myself in the garage. So let's see if this thing will take its first steps under its own power in over a year, I believe, since this thing was last driven. Blood the clutch the other night. I think it should move. Let's hope. Okay, that's 25 minutes, probably actually more like 27 or something. Um, but I think we are good to go and pull this valve cover and retorque these head studs to the final stage. And then we are done with worrying about engine related stuff. Temperature stays nice and cold, no overheating. Everything looks good. I'm actually gonna crack the bleeder for the one last time here. Oh yeah, this head is looking beautiful. 
Very nice, good oil distribution in there. Sprayer bars look like they're working good. Oh, I love an M30 that's clean inside. So, 35 degrees angle. All right. That is a fully torque sequenced M30 head. We are all done. I can finally return Zach's snap on torque wrench because the job is done. All three torque stages are completed. And I think there is a good place to conclude this very exciting, action-packed video. The M30 runs, moves under its own power, keeps cool, ITBs work. This is literally so exciting. I, I have not been this excited about a car in a long time. I mean, this was a lot. If you guys are still here, I appreciate you. That is basically how you not only do ITBs on an M30, but also install a B35 into an E28, but not just install a B35 into an E28, but install a B35 into a 528E. We did a lot of modifications here. I think I covered just about everything. The expansion tank is not fastened completely, but that's as simple as a bracket. The fabricator for my exhaust will hopefully do that for me. Um, you know, all the wiring, the plumbing of everything. It is not that difficult. I think there was a lot to learn. I think this video is crucial to enthusiasts in the future that need to do this swap because like I said, that diagram earlier is not completely accurate for the E24 harness. There's a few things you have to adapt, but I hope this video helps a lot of people in the future because there's not a lot of you know content on this sort of stuff and it's a lot of work um, and a lot of guessing and stuff so hopefully this clarifies a lot of stuff. Um, it doesn't leak, it runs good, it, I'm like really, that is about as perfect as a first start as I could ever hope for. Um, it is, I have no doubts that this thing is going to be a fantastic driver. Uh, Basically, everything is set up. All that's left for me to do is um, sync the ITBs, get it tuned, and get an exhaust. I gotta get a wideband sensor, and then we'll figure out how to install that and how to wire that in. Um, and that'll be the next episode. We will hopefully get in touch with a tuner. I don't know if I'll film much of the exhaust stuff. That'll probably be me more so just dumping it off at a place to get that done. So I don't know if I'll have much on that. But hopefully we'll pick up getting the exhaust sorted, starting the tuning process, dialing in the ITBs, and um, going from there. So, again, thank you guys so much for everyone that's watched and that's made it this far. I hope you enjoyed this series so far. This has been long and drawn out, and I apologize for that, but I've been so busy. But we are here. It's running. It's driving. And I am freaking stoked. So stay tuned for the next episode. It'll be a good one. Get, maybe get our first drives in on this thing. So I'll see you guys in that episode. Peace.